1971, President Nixon declared war on cancer. Billions of dollars and 45 years later, it could be argued that we've made zero progress in this endeavor. We've all heard a definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. I say it's time we stop giving these billions of dollars to the same people who failed us for 45 years. Our medical researchers suffer from a pernicious orthodoxy which prevents them from finding a cure for cancer. This orthodoxy is perpetuated by the pharmaceutical industry. Drug companies are in business to make money. As it is, hundreds of billions of dollars are spent each year treating cancer alone. A cancer cure would mean they would lose these hundreds of billions of dollars of income and only make back what little, if anything, they could get for selling the cure. The problem with curing a patient is it's a one-time deal. The patient doesn't come back. It's much more lucrative to have a treatment where the patient has to keep coming back and buy more treatments. For this reason, drug companies won't look for a cure for anything. They'd much prefer a treatment that requires you to take their pills every day for the rest of your life. Before there were drugs, people would use diet and herbs and what have you to fight disease with limited success. People found out that eating seaweed would stop goiter, limes would cure scurvy, sunshine would prevent rickets, eating liver would prevent blindness. Then came penicillin and other antibiotics, and these worked quickly and decisively and saved many lives. Soon people wanted all other treatments to work this way. There are potentially hundreds of these so-called quack cures for cancer. We hear about them in the news when someone is arrested for promoting one or someone goes to another country to get one. Is it possible one of these hundreds of claims for cancer cures actually fights cancer? We're told there's no scientific evidence that any of these things work. But that doesn't mean they don't work. And whose fault is this anyway? The main reason there's no scientific evidence that any of these things work is because we've given our research dollars to people who are convinced that only a man-made pharmaceutical can fight cancer. Let's consider how crazy this idea is that one of these quack cures might actually work. Is it possible that out of the hundreds of claims of cancer cures that every last one of them is worthless? Yes. Is it possible that out of the hundreds of claims of UFO sightings that every last one of them is due to some phenomenon other than a UFO uh, spaceship from another planet? Yes. Now, which headline would be most surprising if you saw this in the news tomorrow? One, UFO sighting last night in Germany turns out to be a spaceship from another planet. Or two, clinical trials show that a quack cure for cancer actually works. Both of these are possible. The most surprising thing about the second headline is that we're told that a clinical trial was done on a quack cure. Trials have been done using vitamins and minerals. A study was done where they took a bunch of people who previously had skin cancer and gave half of them selenium supplements of 200 micrograms per day, an amount you might be getting already in your diet. They were hoping that this would reduce the recurrence of skin cancer, but that didn't happen. It did work on other cancers, though. Those getting the selenium supplement had a 25% decrease in total cancer incidence, a 52% decrease in prostate cancer incidence, a 26% decrease in lung cancer incidence, a 54% decrease in colorectal cancer incidence, and a 41% decrease in total cancer mortality. I remember hearing about this on ABC News with Peter Jennings. They brought out Dr. Timothy Johnson to explain. After presenting us with this exciting news, Dr. Johnson recommended that nobody take any selenium supplements. <laughs> you know, we don't know the long-term effects, yada, yada. Just a week later, or maybe it was the week before, Dr. Johnson reported on a pharmaceutical drug which was given to patients who previously had a heart attack. Those getting the drug had like a 20-25% decrease in a recurrent heart attack. Dr. Johnson recommended everyone take this drug, whether they've had a heart attack or not, if you're otherwise at risk of getting a heart attack. We know that a deficiency of vitamin A, D, or K2 will increase your risk of getting cancer. A deficiency of selenium, iodine, magnesium, or zinc will increase your risk of getting cancer. What would happen if we supplemented all of these together in optimal amounts? Well, we don't know. And the fact that in the 21st century we don't know 
is due to this pernicious orthodoxy that I mentioned. If it turned out that a simple vitamin and mineral supplements could eliminate a large fraction of illnesses, this would make drug companies unhappy. Doctors and researchers would lose money and status. For this reason, I say we should stop giving money to the same people who have failed us all these years. It may turn out cancer is largely a vitamin and mineral deficiency disease. They can't say there's no scientific evidence that certain vitamins and minerals fight cancer, because there is. It's on the internet. Just Google vitamin D and cancer, or iodine and cancer. There are many people who would be devastated if it turned out cancer could be mostly wiped out with a simple, cheap, non-patentable supplement. And they include those we're giving our research dollars to, so they won't be shooting themselves in the foot anytime soon looking for this possibility.